It's time for another video question bank. This is the video series where I help you train your brain to think like a master test taker and dominate USMLE and Comlex. An elderly male who recently underwent emergent surgery is recovering in the intensive care unit. They have a past medical history of hypertension, overactive bladder, and malnutrition. They are somnolent on exam and provide limited history. Their vitals are temp 101.7, heart rate 108, blood pressure 134 over 84, and respiratory rate 18. Their spouse, who is at the bedside, reports that when the patient was more alert, they reported chills. You review the patient's chart, and their home medications include lisinopril and oxybutynin. Labs are remarkable for the following. Amylase level is high, lipase level is normal, and white blood cell count is high. Now note, I'm not giving you values here, I'm just telling you which one's high, which one's normal. Which of the following is the correct diagnosis? A, acute pancreatitis, B, chronic pancreatitis, C, human immunodeficiency virus or HIV, D, parotitis, or E, hospital acquired infection. Now if you'd like some time to think about this, pause the video now. And now I'm going to give you the correct answer. So in this question, the correct answer is choice D, parotitis. And I'm going to highlight for you what you should have been paying attention to in the vignette in order to get this correct. So we have an elderly patient, recently underwent surgery, has a history of overactive bladder and malnutrition, currently showing abnormal vital signs, including an elevated temp and an elevated heart rate, reporting chills, and being on, at baseline, oxybutynin. Amylase level is high. Now, before we just dive into the way that you should have thought about this, let's just do a very, very rapid review of parotitis. So remember that parotitis refers to the acute onset unilateral swelling of a salivary gland. Essentially, it is inflammation of a salivary gland. Remember when you see itis at the end of the name, itis equals inflammation. And so in this case, parotitis is inflammation of the parotid gland. Now you can see fevers, chills, pain, plus or minus discharge from the salivary gland. Labs will tend to show elevated amylase. This may be due causatively to either mumps or HIV, and it has a lot of associations. And that's really what I wanted to test you on in this question. So let's just talk about a few of those. It's associated with being post-op. So if you were intubated or dehydrated during your surgery, that's gonna lead to parotitis. It's associated with advanced age, Elderly folks tend to have less salivary secretions and therefore they're more at risk to develop inflammation or infection in the gland. It's associated with anticholinergic medications, again, because anticholinergic medications cause decreased salivation. And when there's less salivation occurring, those glands are more prone to infection. It's associated with malnutrition. It's associated with cachexia, especially in patients in the ICU. And it's associated with oral neoplasia and immunosuppression. Now let's go back to the question here, and I've again highlighted in orange what I wanted you to pay attention to in this question. Now let's just say you were taking this and you didn't know the associations with parotitis, right? You didn't know that if you're elderly, recently underwent surgery, have a history of overactive bladder, take anticholinergic medication like oxybutynin, have a history of malnutrition, and show evidence of an acute inflammatory process. Let's just say you couldn't pair all of that stuff with parotitis. The question is, could you still get this question correct by the process of elimination and working backwards? And I would argue to you that you can. So let's look at this. If the correct answer was going to be one of the pancreatitis or pancreatitides, if that's the word, you probably would have been given different information. So for acute pancreatitis, that lipase level would have been elevated. They also probably would have given you physical exam findings because Pancreatitis is so unique on exams that for the purposes of USMLE and COMLEX, the test writers really can't give you something that's vague, right? They have to give you more pinpoint findings. And I, I went out of my way in the vignette to tell you that um, the exam is, is fairly limited. So you're, not, you're probably not thinking pancreatitis in this question. In the case of HIV, you probably would have had to be given one of two things. You would have either need to have seen a CD4 count, which I never gave you, or you would have had to have an AIDS-defining illness, something to point you in the direction of HIV. And as you can see here, I didn't give you any of that. The best and closest thing I gave you to HIV was simply the fact that somebody has a fever and is tachycardic. 
and that's really it. And that's not enough information to push you in the direction of selecting an answer with so many more associated findings. So at this point in the question, you're not seeing any evidence of pancreatitis, you're not seeing any evidence of HIV, and going back specifically to chronic pancreatitis, again, you would have had to see that physical exam um, and the history of the illness, because chronic pancreatitis is, is somewhat similar to acute pancreatitis, but it has a more defined uh, natural history of the disease. I didn't give you any of that. So if you're taking this question, the way to look at this differently is like, I'm not sure what peritis is would be here, but Am I seeing the associated findings of pancreatitis? No. Am I seeing associated findings of HIV? No, because I'm not seeing a CD4 count. I'm not seeing any evidence of immunosuppression or AIDS-defining illness. And so you're kind of in this in-between stage where if you're eliminating stuff, you can probably eliminate A, B, and C right off the bat. And that leaves you with hospital-acquired infection. And while it's certainly possible that the, the elevated temperature and the elevated heart rate are due to a hospital acquired infection, I'm giving you so many associations with peritis that I'm pushing you in that direction. There's no definitive evidence that this is a hospital acquired infection. I would have had to give you lots of other information. And so the point I'm trying to illustrate here is let's say you're taking your exam and you get it down to D versus E. If you're completely in the dark and you have no idea what to pick here, you've got a 50-50 shot of getting this question right simply by working backwards and eliminating things. The biggest and most important question you can ask yourself when you're taking USMLE or Comlex is if the test writer wanted me to pick choice A, what would they have given me in the vignette? If the test writer would have wanted me to pick choice C, what would they have given me in the vignette? And so you can think back to when you were studying about, for example, pancreatitis or HIV. There were so many important buzzwords and high yield findings, and you can see literally none of that here in this question. And so when you're taking questions, just to beat the dead horse one more time, if you're not sure what answer to pick, ask yourself, what would the test writer have included in this question if they wanted me to pick pancreatitis? What would the test writer have included in this question if they wanted me to pick HIV? And work backwards and eliminate what you think makes the least amount of sense. That'll leave you with one or maybe two answers and you've got a 50-50 shot of getting the question correct. But that was the purpose of this question. I hope that this was helpful. Keep up the great studying and good luck.